بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته much better much better um, I want to start off by saying all praise be to Allah the most gracious the most merciful the most powerful it's only him we worship only him we bow down to and only him we turn to when we're in need and also like to send peace and blessings upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam my dear respected brothers and sisters yeah right now I'm going to speak on behalf of the brothers on a serious note bro if you can't respect each other if you can't put your pride and your arrogance aside and if you feel like you can't control yourself, bro, the door's over there. Allah don't need you to be here. I don't need you to be here, bro. Every single one of you could get up and walk away. That don't mean nothing to me, bro. We come here together under the one banner of La ilaha in Allah. We put our differences aside. Brothers, mashallah, tabarakallah, we're big men, bro. And we're making mad noise in the masjid. Don't get me wrong. It's a good thing that a lot of the youth are here. But when it's time to pray... Bro, you give respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He comes first. Over your mother, your father, your brothers, your sisters, your girlfriend that you got laying around somewhere. I don't care. But you'll put your differences aside because Allahu Akbar is about to begin. Salah so comes first. So like I said to you, if anybody feels like, and I'm not even saying to you, I'm a dusty guy, bro. I'm a waste man. I'm not telling you, oh, my man thinks he's better than us. Nah, bro. I'm worse than you. I know that for a fact. But the matter of fact is, bro, this is the house of Allah. We respect it. We come together. There's different faces, different nationalities, different shades of skin. That's all because of the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We come here for a reason. There's a few things I'm going to talk about during this lecture. And one of them being, as a lot of youngsters, especially the ages between 14, 15, and so on and so forth, and up, are falling into. And that's haram relationship. Man, see a couple brothers here, mashallah, tabarakallah, coming to this masjid, holding hands with another sister, hugging her, saying, I'll see you after the talk. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, at least he's come to the masjid, isn't it? But really, is this what it's come to? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive every sin of a Muslim except the ones that you do publicly and openly, bro. Like, where's the shame, bro? I remember back in my day when we were here, if man them used to smoke up and down those blocks around the corner and the uncle or auntie used to walk past, best believe we're putting that cigarette or that weed away. Oh, we're going to stop listening to music. Jazakallah khairan, bro. Oh, we're going to stop listening to that music that we're listening to, even though we're around the corner from the masjid. Nowadays, you don't give a damn. You continue. Where's the fear of Allah gone, bro? We're Muslims. Since when has Islam become secondary? Since when? And no wonder we're miserable. We're all suffering from suf something to do with isms, bro. PTSD and so on and so forth. Man, them are stressed. Man, them are depressed. Why? Because you put everything in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, before Allah. You chose the girlfriend. You chose your education, your job, before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's be real with ourselves, bro. What is happening to us, man? There's some non-Muslims here for the first time. Is this how Muslims act? We're brothers. Marshall, a brother couldn't hack you, started laughing. <laughs> but really and truly, I'm going to tell you this now, isn't it? If you're sitting in front of or, or next to the brother that's sitting next to you, and that brother is the joke man of your circle, or that brother is the one that doesn't uh, you know, remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he drags you away from obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obeying your parents, bro. Start questioning your relationship with that guy, bro. That guy don't want good for you. That guy don't want Jannah for you, bro. That guy is trying to distract you from the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or whatever comes with it. That's Allah, the Quran, the Sunnah, and the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You see, they sacrificed a lot, bro. Islam spread to Europe. 
And that was because of them. By the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I've gone to places. And recently I was working on a project for the past two weeks. And I met a lot of people, a lot of people. And I met one guy that now decides to do therapy on behalf of someone that passed away at the age of 16, bro, that committed suicide. Non-Muslim. But I've got a good respect for him on this and this movement, this trend that is going by his name. And you know what that is? That is he committed suicide because he was in a haram relationship, bro. He wasn't Muslim, but you know what I mean by haram relationship. All of us were in it once upon a time, whether we liked it or not. But how many of us are still in it, bro? The girl broke his heart. He couldn't hack it. So he took his own life. Some people from Leicester community contacted me knowing that I'm going to Leicester to do a talk with Abu Taymiyyah. On the 2nd of July, a 15-year-old Muslim, Muslim, took his own life because the girl he was with decided to go and see another guy, bro. How many of us are still involved in that, bro? Islam completes, you know, getting married completes half of your deen in Islam. If you're really going down that path or you feel like you're going to fall into what? Zina. The zina of the eyes. The zina of the hands, bro. How many of us see pornography? It's become normal amongst the Muslim community, bro. Some, some of the youngsters come to me, bro, after my talks, they pull me to the side. Actually, I can't help it, but I'm, I'm, I'm addicted to pornography. Another guy, I'm addicted to smoking weed. I'm addicted to committing zina. That's their trials and tribulations. That's their fitna. I can't put him down for that, bro. I'm scared that I might be even involved in that once. You never know. Allah could test every single one of us here. But nowadays, what's worse and what's coming, it's becoming quite disgusting and disturbing, is that Muslims are finding the faults of their Muslim brother. And you have the audacity to think that Allah gave you the green light. Where Allah is not going to expose you. And expose this nasty and the filth that you come up to. That you get up to behind closed doors. Or what you do on the phone. Or when your parents are calling you to pray your salah. What are you doing bro? Okay, I was once upon a time there. We pretend that we pray our prayers. Mom, dad, amen, make sure you're praying. Salatul Maghrib has come. No worries, mom. I'm being distracted. Shaitan's distracting me. The moment I hear footsteps coming up the, uh, sorry, the stairs, what do I do? Straight away I get into sajda. Pretend that I've been praying already. Who am I fooling, bro? My parents. Or am I fooling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Let me tell you this, my dear respected brothers and sisters, yeah? Islam is going to move forward with or without you. You don't like the rules that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in place? You don't like what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam done for you? You don't like what the companions had to sacrifice for you? You don't, you don't want to follow them? Well, leave Islam, bro. Islam is not a trend. And everybody's jumping on this bandwagon of trend. Back in my day, bro, we used to wear baggy clothes. Nowadays, man wears baggy clothes. Oh, look at that man's boot cut. Man's wearing boot cut jeans or trousers. When every man, every man decided to jump on the bandwagon now, following the trend of what? Wearing tight clothes. Some men would look like they're wearing leggings, bro. Leggings. Why is your clothes so tight, bro? <laughs> Am I lying, though? Man, them are going with this trend, bro. Islamically, as a man, we're meant to wear baggy fins. Not baggy things such as like, oh, you know what? We can still roll our trousers up. Wear it above your ankle. Since when is it okay for us to wear tight clothes, bro? And nowadays it's become the opposite. The sisters are doing the opposite. They're wearing baggy clothes, but it's baggy jeans, baggy, uh, uh, baggy jumper, baggy tee. Where's your hijab gone? They think their hijab is just a headscarf. No, bro. Your hijab is everything, bro. Your character, your etiquette, how you speak. 
That's your hijab. On top of that, your abaya. And I don't know where it's come to, bro. Oh, uh, you know what? This, you know what? The brother's getting too much now. He's getting onto us. I couldn't give a damn. Sisters nowadays, they're wearing abaya. Allahumma barik. But they got this belt across their waist. Why are you trying to show your figure, man? A woman that shows her figure would not come 500 years close to Jannah, bro, because she's showing her figure. How about that? This is a hadith. A woman that is clothed but yet naked. What does that mean, bro? A woman that is dressed modest. But yeah, you can see every figure. For what? Who are you trying to fool? And you got thirsty brothers. Oh, mashallah, sister. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Am I lying though? It happens. And do you know what the, the places that it happens the most is, stress, um, is, is Stratford Westfield and Shepherd's Bush Westfield. Are you not know this? Calm, calm, calm. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. You see? You see that friend sitting next to you? He's laughing, trying to expose you. Because he knows you're upon that. So my dear respected brothers, yeah? My brothers, my brothers. Like I said to you, yeah? My brothers respect, man. Brothers, wallahi, yesterday... I was in two minds of coming to this talk, reasons being, bro, I was five hours away working on something. And I said to myself, SubhanAllah, how can I let the brothers down? The brothers that want to come out of their way to try to le learn something about the deen of Allah. And let me tell you something, my brothers, yeah? I couldn't care if you've smoked weed, if you've committed zina, if you're still fornicating, if you're still... Uh, uh, doing, you know, committing zina with your left hand or right hand. I don't care. For brothers now that, that are addicted to pornography, I don't give a damn what you're on, bro. I don't care if you're still going out there carrying a knife and stabbing people or, or wanting to put a knife on someone. I don't care, bro. I don't care if you're shot in drugs. One thing, never give up, my brothers and sisters, yeah? Never give up is the salah. It's your prayer. Something that I neglected when I was your age, 13, 14, 15... I neglected it and delayed it. Bro, this is the only thing that gives me peace in today's world, bro. I'm fighting my demons from salah to salah. I'm fighting my desires, bro. I'm a married man, but there's still other women out there that my, that my desire tells me that I want to get married to. I'm still, uh, I'm still learning the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but at times my mind's telling me, is this really true? Is Islam really to be the truth? What's the prophet really a prophet? We go through this. This is from the shaitan. This is from the devil. Why are we going down the path of shaitan and forgetting the path of Rahman? Allah's mercy. Why? Stop neglecting your soul, bro. And I remember when I give the call to, you know, the call to prayer, the adhan in front of non-believers. But they're like, oh, here we go. This muzi, this Muslim guy decides to give us the call to prayer. Wallahi, they told me every hair on their body stands up. I told them your soul was telling you this is to be the truth. Why are you neglecting your soul? Why? But Allah gave the permission to your soul to wake up every single day. He gives the permission for your eyelids, bro, your eyelids to blink. They seek permission from Allah. Your hands, your limbs, your mouth. What you breathe, what you see, what you hear seeks permission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before doing anything. So why are we neglecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bro? Why are we neglecting the basics of Islam? La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. If I were to tell you right now, right now, bro, go and get me a Quran, bro. Someone get me a Quran, please, yeah? I hope you have wudu as well. But give me the Quran. You have a Quran? Alhamdulillah, it's a small Quran. Come, come. I want both of yours, inshallah. If I were to tell you, Jazakallah khair, Habib. If I were to tell you right now, right now, 
as your Muslim brother, that I'm going to rip, Jazakallah khair, that I'm going to rip these Qur'ans. That I'm going to spit at it and neglect it and throw it against the wall. I expect every single one of you to get up and, and do me in. I expect that from you, bro. But this Qur'an that if I were to spit at and throw, and if I were to stamp on, every man's looking to ride out for. Yeah? Correct, yeah? So why do we neglect this every single day, bro? Why does your hands and your mouth and your eyes neglect this every single day, bro? Why is it that you're quick to do something for someone that you think you're riding out for the deen of Allah, but your jihad is going against your own soul? So why do we neglect this book? And this is what I mean. Everybody's looking to do something to make a difference. Because they've neglected this Qur'an, but yet when you see it in person, you're looking to ride out for But this book has been neglected by the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed. And that's you. You that's sitting here. And when I went to Milwaukee's Keys a few months ago, I think about two months ago, I went to Milwaukee's. Keys, Akhi, I had a talk like this. And there was a brother that was a trapper. He was making about two grand a day. Money's good. He had the girls around him. He's driving a nice car. The man them in his hood, they all know him. He's a bad boy in his hood. But guess what? My man decided to come to my talk. We had a long talk. He said to me, bro, from this day onwards, I'm never going to go back to selling drugs. I'm going to give everything away. We had a long conversation in the office of the masjid. Actually, 12 hours later, the man got stabbed up. Look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested him. You claim that you've changed. You claim that you're going to go by this Quran. You claim that you're going to follow the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'm going to test you now. And Allah tested him to get him stabbed up. Alhamdulillah, nothing bad happened to him. And when I spoke to him, when I spoke to him, because his family members hollered at me, when I spoke to him, the brother said to me, I am grateful. I know who done it. I know where to find him. But I'm going to leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because I made the oath. I made the oath to Allah that I'm going to change my ways. Allah tested him within 12 hours, bro. 12 hours, my man got stabbed up. And I feel like that man is blessed. You know why? Because we all, we all, we all, what's the word? We say to ourselves that we, I am going to do my best. We all talk to ourselves. And say, I am a changed man. I'm going to change from today onwards. But Allah doesn't test you. But this man, Lord, like he was sincere in his heart. And he is a blessed man. You know why? Because Allah tested him straight away. Allah tested him straight away. When is our test, bro? Our life is happy, man. We got no issues, bro. We don't neglect nothing, bro. We got a girl on the side. A boyfriend on the side. We got our weed that we steal money from our parents from. We steal money from our parents to go buy a bag of weed. We steal uh, money from our parents to try and fit in with everybody that's around us because everybody is j jumping on this bandwagon of wearing these trendy clothes. Montclair, uh, Hoodrich, or and all of these dusty brands. And all of these brands, if you look deep involved, like Balenciaga, and I own a lot of Balenciagas, yeah? Like trainers and this and that. And wallahi, not once did I ever purchase anything with a big brand. It was all given to me as a gift. I wouldn't spend money on these things. So now, looking at recently what's happened with this Balenciaga thing, what is the meaning of Balenciaga, bro? If you break it down. Akhi? Baal is kin. And who's Baal? It's a devil. It's a goat. It's the goat. There's a goat there doing a mad symbol. I don't want to even do it. And Balenciaga broken down is that that, and guess who this is? It's a kin. It's a, uh, sorry, it's a, it's, a, it's a devil that people go to to sacrifice for. Other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the thing that man them are wearing, bro. You're wearing things that you don't know what you're wearing at. And wallahi, I'm going to tell you this now, brothers, man. 
A few weeks ago, there's a guy. From he was in Ladywell down the road. Hot day like today, windows down. You know, some of you know who I'm talking about. And there was a problem with the guy that he was his passenger. His passenger had beef with someone that was on a push bike. Good brother, mashallah, tabarakallah. He had his, he had his trials and tribulations and he had his roots on the road. He was known for. By the end of the day, he's a Muslim. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower him with mercy. Allahumma ameen. And for him to enter Jannah, paradise, Allahumma ameen. But because he was around the wrong company, a guy that saw him on a pushback made a U-turn, came back, put a knife through the window, stabbed him straight in the chest and died on the scene, bro. And that was a few weeks ago in Ladywell. And everybody heard about it. The roads were closed off and so on and so forth. You see how important your company is, bro? Where sometimes people are guilty by association. Not guilty by what you've done. Because you might be an innocent guy. Is it fair for the police to knock on your mother or your father's door to say to you, you need to come to the hospital to identify your son's body? That's because you wanted to be around the wrong company. That's because I wanted to be around the wrong company. People are dying every day, man. Look at what's happening in Iraq, in Palestine, in Syria, in Burma. Look at what's happening with the, Muslim, the Chinese Muslims that were neglected and forgotten for so long. The Chinese Muslims are being killed, tortured and raped every single day, bro. Because of one reason. Because they believe in La ilaha in Allah. Do you believe in La ilaha in Allah? With your actions? Do you believe in La ilaha in Allah based on what you preach, what you speak, what you see? Because if you don't, today could be the day, man. Walk away from here. Be the change you wish to see in the world. Be the reason why someone falls in love with Islam. Be the reason why someone says to, my, you know, says to themselves that I'm glad that that guy is my brother in the faith. That the man that's sitting next to me, and I'm going to say this right now, brothers, yeah? A lot of you have come here today, you haven't salamed the people that you don't know. So I'm going to ask you right now. Salam the brother and the sister that's sitting next to you. Salam them, man. That's your brother in Islam, bro. Salam that brother and, and, mean, and mean it from the heart. Because no matter what, no matter what, you will forever be your, mashallah, some brother went too far and put someone in the headlock. Calm down, brother. Yo, I didn't mention headlock, akhi. Calm down. Alayhi salam. May Allah bless you. And the reason why I say this, bro, that you know when you salam this brother that's sitting next to you, and there was a story of a brother that came to me, yeah? And this is what I say to you, you know, giving salam to someone is so powerful. There was a story of a brother that came to me, said to me, Akhi, I was going down the path of committing suicide. This brother was a married man. He had a wife, he had kids. And he was on his way to commit suicide because nothing in his life was going well. And guess what? The same brother was actually someone that was neglecting the one thing that gave him peace. And that's his salah. He stopped praying for years. And everything in his life went downhill. So guess what happens? The man is on his way to go and commit suicide. And there was another brother that also was doing what? Not going through a good day. He also was having a bad day. He was stressed out. I don't know if man was having a girlfriend problems and so on and so forth. I don't know in it. But my man felt good about himself because he, on his way, walking past this brother from across the road, he was listening to a lecture. And the lecture made him feel good. He said he was listening to something, didn't he? And subhanAllah, the more I speak about the story, the more detail comes back to mind from when this brother told me. He said, this guy crossed the road just to give me the salam. Bear in mind, I was on my way to go and commit suicide. He said, the moment this brother gave me salam and gave me this hug, this hug that he hasn't felt for a very long time. The hug that his wife hasn't given him. The hug that he hasn't received from his family members, bro. 
It's the hug that he received from a stranger. From a stranger. He said the moment he felt this handshake and this hug, Wallahi, he completely forgot about committing suicide. So he decided to go to the masjid after that and prayed two ruqah, even though it's not salah time. He prayed two ruqah and, 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 and he was begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep him steadfast. He was begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep him on this path of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. My dear brothers, man, it hurts me to see that what's happening on the road, man. Brothers are carrying a knife. Brothers are stabbing each other. You got the brothers from Black Math. You got the guys from B side. You got the guys from SG. You got this. Mashallah, I never knew that nowadays there's guns that are numbers. Six, seven, six, nine, G65. I don't know, bro. M20. Monster. But what's going on with gang members, bro? Huh? Block six. MashaAllah. And I've heard a lot of stuff about this block six guys, man. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide them. They're talking about some devilish stuff. Now let me tell you something, my dear respected brothers, yeah? Brothers, brothers. Please, yeah. Brothers, every single one of these gang members that are drill artists, bro. Look at their lyrics, bro. It's everything they're spitting. Going against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Of course it is, bro. I remember I must have said something online, yeah? At a talk I did in Birmingham. I wonder if it was, yeah? Oh, like, brother, like, um... I said something along the lines, like, oh, brothers, listen to little Dirk. But what about the dirt that's going to be put on you? It's a bit cringy, I understand. But I said that, and brothers are getting onto me, giving me a backlash, saying, bro, why are you getting onto your Muslim brother? I can't get onto the brothers that surround me, regardless if they're rappers or not, bro. What, you think? You think we don't get onto people? You think the Imam here doesn't get onto these rappers that are Muslims? Not in a sense. Not in a sense where he gets onto them to make them feel bad about what they're doing, bro. But getting onto them in a way where it is upon the etiquette of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in a humble manner. You don't get onto them about their music. You don't get onto them about their drug dealing and so on and so forth, bro. But you get onto them about the fact of the matter, bro. Tone it down a bit, Ak. And the more you remind them of Islam and following the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the more their hearts become softer. The more they will forget about this music that they're rapping about. They're forgetting about these you know, instruments and going to the studio and so on and so forth, bro. And the imam that's in this masjid, there's a reason why he's got a podcast called The Bridge. And someone asked me, and someone asked him, what's the reason why you called it The Bridge? Yeah? And look at his reply. It's to build a bridge between the speaker and the audience, bro. How was your bridge that you've built with your family members, bro? Do you neglect your parents? I was in this here. I was here. This is my community, bro. I see a lot of uncles and a lot of aunties get out doing shopping and picking up heavy bags. And, and I'm like, where's their kids? Their kids are in the park or chasing girls or smoking weed or listening to music on the block or... Why are you neglecting your parents, bro? I see it happening in this community. And I feel so sad because I want to pull up. I want to give the auntie or the uncle a drive or I want to be able to help them with their bags, but I can't do that. Because I've got enemies around this area, bro. I don't know what's going to happen if they see me. Don't get me wrong, I'm away from that lifestyle, but it don't mean some of these people that we had problems with have forgotten what's happened on the roads. But I make my athkar, I make my... I remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the morning and I remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the evening. My athkar in the morning and evening is what gets me through the day. Whatever was to happen to me, I couldn't care. And I remember I was living somewhere with my wife and look, at, and, look, and, and look at the distance that my wife went 
in order to argue with me to get rid of this pot and pan. So I had a big pot, I think some of you have heard this, yeah? <laughs> so I had a big pot, those of you that haven't heard it, yeah? So I had a big pot, subhanAllah, that me and my wife were arguing, but not that type of arguing, Paul. The type of arguing like you need to get rid of this, it's taking up too much space in the house, you need to go with it. I said, I'm not doing it. She goes, you are. I'm not doing it. Yes, you are. Bear in mind, when you get married, bro, the real boss is actually your wife, yeah? <laughs> you provide and you protect. But her say-so goes. So at the end of the day, I ended up taking this uh, pot and pan and got on the train. And I got on the train here. By the time I got to Lady Woe, because I'm coming to Catford, by the time I got to Lady Woe, a couple of men recognized who I am and decided to want to do something. And in the process of trying to do something, I'm there listening to something, but I stopped what I'm listening to in order for me to listen to what they're saying. They say, yo, that's my man's brother. Oh, you know, that's my man, 100% is him. So I've already realized where it is, bro. I opened my bag. I made sure I had the pot in one hand and the lid in another hand. <laughs> Wallahi, as they got closer, and you remember these overground trains here, yeah? they've got the two seats, then you've got the three seats, three seats, they're facing each other. Then another two seats, two seats, yeah? So I'm in the middle of these three seats now. And I've got my leg over the front seats. And I've got a bag, so I've opened up the bag. I've got the pot in one hand and the, and the shield, you know? But it's the lid in another hand. And the moment I see the knives getting taken out of their waist, I knew what time it is. Straight away, I reacted to it. I decided to... Hold the shield, the lid, and hitting them with the pot. And it's a big pot, bro. And wallah al I remember the sound effects that the pots were making. After. Yeah? It's hitting their head or their shoulder. Doing, doing. And they're hitting me, they're trying to hit me with a knife. And in the process of hitting me with a knife, you can hear the chin chin in the air. You know what I'm saying? Chin chin chin. Bro, but alhamdulillah. After that commotion, I said to myself, subhanAllah, what if I didn't listen to my wife, bro? Everything happens by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And your wife that wanted good for me, if I never had that, akhi, I would have got stabbed up again. I would have been either dead this time because there was three of them. But only two of them took out a knife. And this is the reality of it, man. Everybody's carrying a knife nowadays. But I told you this, my dear respected brothers, yeah? If you put your trust in Allah, sincerely put your trust in Allah, Wallahi, nothing will ever harm you, bro. You don't neglect the salah. You don't neglect giving zakat. You don't neglect coming to the masjid. Wallahi, Allah will protect you. And I know some people have actually passed away being innocent. And this is a message for the brothers that are thinking they are bad boy. Akhi, let down your life, bro. Stop your drug dealing. Stop your smoking, as well. Nowadays, brothers are jumping on this pay-as-you-go shisha, which is vaping, yeah? You pay for it, you get it. And I did some of my research about the shisha, I mean, this, uh, this, this uh, vaping, yeah? I found out it's from urine. So shout out for the brothers that are vaping, bro. <laughs> shout out to you, bro. No wonder. Listen to this, brothers, yeah? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I bet brothers are pointing to the brother next to him. Yo, relax, man. Don't expose your brother, man. Relax, man. So my dear respected brothers and sisters, yeah? And one of the scene, uh, so one of the things that really baffled me, really baffled me is during Ramadan, I saw brothers that are wearing this uniform, this, 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 this kameez, this phobe. Because this is a uniform, bro. You know what a Jewish is from a distance? A Jew is a, the guy with the hair, with the curly hair on the side of it. You know that's a Jew. That's his uniform. You know who a Muslim is. You know who a hijabi is. because you, know you know who they are, bro. You understand? You know who a nun is based on her uniform, how she's dressed. I see a guy during Ramadan, and then I'm thinking to myself, should I slap myself or should I slap him? My man's got miswak in one hand and vaping in another. <laughs> now, really and truly, bro, 
Do I need to slap myself? Because that's harming myself, so I can't do that. Or should I go and slap him? Because that means I'm oppressing the brother. I had to speak to him, bro. I said to him, Achi, what's wrong with you, man? If you're going to be doing these things, Achi, do not do it publicly, man. Because every single eye that sees you is going to speak against you in your maqiyama. Imagine that you're doing all of this vaping stuff to be cool and posting on Instagram and Twitter and Snapchat. You're there like this, bro. You're blowing it out and trying to blow O's. Every single person that now viewed that story or viewed that video is going to speak against you on your maqiyama. They're going to be like, yeah, I witnessed it. Imagine if there was technology at the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, such as phones. I don't think they will be having it, bro. It's a distraction. But every single one of us have it. And this smartphone is either going to speak for you or against you. It's going to speak for you or against you, my brothers, man. What you do on it. If you're trying to learn the deen of Allah and getting closer to Islam by using the smartphone, Akhi, my hat goes off to you, bro. Go ahead. But if you're really and truly scrolling on these dusty models that are online, and you're giving them the views, and you're giving them the likes and the shares and the follow, Akhi, follow the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because this is a man. That two billion Muslims right now are following, bro. And he don't have social media. Imagine that. But we neglect him on a daily basis. We, we tell ourselves, we lie to ourselves, thinking that, we've, that we love the Prophet. This is a man that was prosecuted, bro, for, for only preaching la ilaha in Allah. This is a man that got kicked out of his home. Out of Mecca. A man that had people spitting and stoning him. That when he came back with the army to conquer Mecca, he showed them mercy. That's your prophet, bro. This is your prophet that we, believe, we, we lie to ourselves about. That we, that we think we follow. But you made your deen secondary act. You made social media your first. You made your family second. Islam second. Your salah second. But everything that shows you happiness and success in this life, which is Islam or whatever comes under the banner of La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, upon the Quran, upon the Sunnah, and upon the understanding of the companions we are neglecting. My dear respected brothers and sisters, I'm not an alim. I'm not an imam. I'm not someone of knowledge. And nowadays, I don't know why this is happening over and over again. There's people out there on social media that are trying to cancel me. Muslims, bro. Muslims. I'm not preaching nothing negative, bro. Telling me, don't take from me. I don't expect none of you to take from me, bro. Take from your local imam. Take from the scholars. I lived this hard life, Akhi. I came from Iraq at the age of nine years old. In year five. In year five, bro. Year five, year six. While people were, were, were getting ready to go into secondary school. Akhi, I was learning, this is cat, this is dog. Imagine that. On top of that, we were in Syria when 9-11 happened. Me and my family, we witnessed 9-11 happening while we was in Syria. We wasn't even in Iraq. It was, we went to Syria because we couldn't catch a direct flight from Iraq to come to the UK. But we, could, but we could do it from Syria. So we spent about six months there to eight months, I think. I can't remember. I was young. 9-11 happened. Actually, we came to the UK and we got prosecuted, actually. Iraq got blamed for it. In school, in school, we had me and my brothers, yeah? And my sister in primary school, we had no friends, bro. Due, at the beginning, during lunch or break, 
We used to find each other just to spend time with each other on the playground. Because everybody neglected us. Got the sun. People that couldn't speak English. People that didn't know what was happening. I'm going, I'm literally going to the teacher doing thumbs up and cursing her at the same time. Because I didn't know what it meant. So she knew. Someone told me to go up to her, give thumbs up and smiling and cursing at her. This is what was happening. And as time went on, while being here, my father and mother did everything under the sun to make sure that we didn't go down the path of being a bad boy. We came to Madrasa here, LIC here. We did Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. Quran studies, Islamic studies, Arabic studies here in this masjid. But outside of these masjid and outside of our homes, we were around the wrong company. And the wrong company allowed us to get stabbed up. Because all of me and my brothers got stabbed up. This bad company allowed us to, some of us, some of the mandem, not my brothers, but some of the mandem started resorting into what? Drug dealing. Some of the mandem started resorting into zina. Some of the mandem started coming to the masjid during Ramadan with their parents. The moment they did two rakah, four rakah, they already sneaking out, bro. Going around the block. Or what we was doing here, we were crossing the road, going into Lady World Park, and playing football in the cages. Uh, a team of five, and that's the routine. This is what me and some of the brothers here used to do. But now, Ramadan is here, I still see it happening, bro. And I can't blame you brothers, you youngsters. Because I was once upon a time there. So I say this to you, man. Take it amongst yourselves, man. Get closer to the book of Allah. Get closer to this book, man. Because every single prophet came with a nation. And came with a book, with a message. But how is it fair that we, are, we have become one of the worst of nations because we neglect this book? And we neglect following the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions. But yet, the best of Prophets out of 124,000 Prophets, it was the Prophet of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is who? The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he was given to what nation? Us. Us. How many of us, bro, are going to go to every single Prophet on Yawm Qiyamah and we're going to ask them, yo, help me out. Nefsi, nefsi. I'm only concerned with myself is what the most prophets are going to say. Except for one. Your prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imagine no matter how much sins you've done, how much girls you're seeing, how much boys you're seeing, how much weed you're smoking, how much salahs you're neglecting, the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is still going to be vouching for you. Do you think it's fair? Honestly, do you think it's fair? That you did everything in your power to not follow the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, but follow the traits of the shaitan and and the, and, 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 and the etiquettes of this dunya. Do you know who we've become? We've become like those men that were commanded by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the battle of what Uhud, where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told them and commanded them to be where. On the mountain, the archways, he said to them, do not come down. Do not come down. Even if you see us winning and shouting and cheering that we won the battle, do not come down. Remain where you are until I command you to. And then guess what happens, bro? The Muslims got the upper hand in that battle. And then the, those men that were on the mountain saw that the Muslims got the upper hand. And saw the what? The booty that's been going around, yeah? The shields, the swords, the gold. All of these things are on the, that are on the battlefield that the Muslims were actually collecting. Because they, they had the upper hand. Guess what happens, bro? They neglected the command of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And some of them, majority of them, left their position. That's who, who we have become. Because we are chasing the dunya like those men, those Muslims on that mountain are, were chasing the dunya. They came down because they didn't want to be left out by collecting 
the booty of the battle, bro. And then guess what happens, bro? What are we doing today? We've become like them. We're chasing the dunya. A mother contacts me, bro, contacts me on the phone and tells me, Eamon, my son is raising his hands on me. Why? Because my mother is not buying me a North Face jacket. My mother's not buying me a Montclair jacket. My mother's not buying me these air forces and so on and so forth. At the age of 15, you're raising your hands on your mother because you're trying to fit in. Is this what the Muslims have become? Is this what Islam has taught us? And wallahi, and I'm going to say this proudly, wallahi, all of these non-believers that see these Islamic videos online, they come and they want to learn about Islam. And who's the one that's turning them away, bro? It's us. With our character. With our behavior. Like I said to you, I come in here, mashallah, tabarakallah, give your girlfriend a little hug. Give your girlfriend a little kiss. You go upstairs, I might come down here. Is this what the Muslims have come to? And I'm going to say this to the brothers that are and the sisters that are in a haram relationship, bro. Give it up for the sake of Allah, bro. If you truly love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you follow the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, actually give it up. There was a couple that I saw walking on the river one time. The age of 17, 18 years old. My heart, my heart didn't, my heart was feeling heavy. I have to open my mouth. I'm on the phone to the wife. I said, listen, I have to open my mouth. She goes to me, if this is what your heart is telling you to do, go and do it. I turned around and said, yo, bro, come here. He came over to me. Assalamu alaikum, wa alaikum assalam. I said to him, Akhi, look, I'm not here to judge you, but bro, it's 11 o'clock. Akhi, go home. It's cold. These times, you know these acid attacks were happening, yeah? So therefore, I'm telling him, bro, you never know, like your wife, or wife or girlfriend, I don't know who she is, yeah? She's wearing the hijab head to toe. Akhi, by all means, go home. You don't want someone to come and throw acid in your face or her face. And Akhi, if she isn't your wife, Akhi, fear Allah. Fear Allah to your best of your abilities, bro. And send her home to her father. And if you are real in wanting to marry her, Akhi, go and approach her father. And I gave him my number. He's asking me, bro, what are you talking about, Ak? That's my wife. Why are you trying to disrespect? But I gave him my number anyway. Wallahi, 10 minutes later, he calls me. He says to me, bro, I just put her in a taxi to go back home. And I'm sorry for lying to you. He said, bro, I don't have a dad. My dad's never been around since I was young. He said, my little brother's in prison doing about 12 years. My mom is a single mother. I have a baby sister. Everything's going on wrong in my life. He said, I said to him, Akhi, we'll go to the father's house and we'll approach him and tell him, look, we're ready to ask for your daughter's hand, right? Yeah? Akhi, the brother went to him and got rejected. The door kept on closing. The door kept on closing, but he, he was committed to this girl. But nothing was going his way. So I said to him, Akhi, work on free things, free relationships in your life, bro. Your relationship with Allah and the Quran or whatever comes with it, this deen. Work on that relationship. Secondly, Akhi, work on your relationship with your family. Even though your father is not around, Akhi, work on your relationship with your father, bro. Contact him, talk to him. Work on your relationship with your mom. Give her a hand. Help her out around the house. Give her money, whatever it may be. And also your relationship with your brother that you haven't spoken to in years because he's doing a 12 years in jail. And secondly, I mean, sorry, and thirdly, work on your relationship with yourself, bro. Work on your relationship with yourself. And those three relationships, wallahi, worked on for about eight months to ten months. And the moment he put everything aside and only worked on these three relationships, he went back to the father, he asked for the sister's hand one more time, Guess what happens? The father accepted. Alhamdulillah for his patience. Sabrun Jamil, a beautiful patience. And I always say this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul ya ibadi ya alladheena asrafu ala anfusihim. La taqnatu min rahmatillah. O my servants, Allah is labeling you. 
He didn't say, oh, slaves. Nah. He said, oh, my servants. Oh, my slaves. He's giving you a title that you belong to him. You know if you're driving a nice car and someone goes, oh, bro, that's a nice car, bro. Whose car is that? Oh, that's my car. You say it with pride because it belongs to you. But Allah labeled you, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِي Oh, my servant. Those that have transgressed against yourselves, against your souls, your body, your heart, your mind, taking all of this negativity that's happening on, on, on road, the music, the weed smokers, the zina, wherever it may be, أخي, you're putting anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first. Those that have transgressed against themselves, do not give up on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not give up on the mercy of Allah. And I understand every single time you go and approach someone and you tell them about your sins. I remember there was a sister that went to an imam. He said, uh, you know what? She comes from a good home, bro. Her father's a alim. He studied the deen. Yeah? The sister went to university, decided to fall into zina. But she comes from a good home. So we don't put the sister down. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for her and her family. Allahumma ameen. Wallahi, she committed zina. In the process of committing zina, she became pregnant. Then she went to an imam. Look at how the imam decided to reply to her. Instead of showing her mercy and being humble to her, instead of telling her that Allah is the all-forgiving, the imam said to her, you, the baby you carry, and your future kids are all going to Jahannam. Are all going hellfire. The sister lost hope. The sister contacted me, by the way, and told her what this imam said. I said to her, please expose this imam so we can go and pay him a visit. Because this is not from the etiquette of these people of knowledge to speak like that. Yeah? And I'm not talking about going to pay a visit where we're going to be physical with him. No, bro. To advise him. Because now you could potentially turn a sister away from the deen of Allah. Because of how you replied. So we left it. And now the sister decided to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, she has given birth. And because she was truthful to her family and she was so sorry and so sincere and repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wallahi, she was tested. Astaghfirullah, just before she gave birth, she lost the child. <coughs> I only found this out three weeks ago because I spoke to the sister a time ago. About three, four weeks ago, the sister contacted me and so said, I actually lost the child. But I was making dua, maybe this child was to come into this earth to be someone that was what? Caused mischief. Someone that was evil. And only by the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did that child return back to him and didn't. I wasn't born yet. I'm telling you this now, bro. Brothers from this community right now are still making money. That are still drug dealing. And they're still licking moves. That are still got about 100, 150k on their table every single time they lick the move between two to three men. <coughs> it's a good day for them. 50 bags each, right? But what are the risks of doing these moves, bro? There's shootouts. There's people that are getting stabbed and there's people that are getting killed in these process. Another guy from a gang from Grove Park. Not far from here. Look at how severe this music scene has got into the minds of people, bro. Into the minds of people. Where one guy stabbed his little brother because his brother didn't ask permission from him to wear his tracksuit. From our community in Lushan Borough. Quite a few years ago. This is what's happening in our community, bro. Do you understand? And there was a brother that I came out of jail from. And I remember I went to jail 2012. Bismillah. Brother, I went to jail in 2012. Actually, I thought I was untouchable, bro, from this community. I got rushed, alhamdulillah. But on a one-on-one, -on -one, two-on-one, alhamdulillah, Allah gave me the ability to fight. I knew what I was doing. In the process of protecting myself, subhanAllah, I don't even know if I spilled something. 
in the process of protecting myself and I thought I was untouchable, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala humbled me, bro, because I oppressed someone. In the process of oppressing someone, I went to jail. And the person I oppressed was actually innocent. And when I came out of jail, I apologized to him and I found him. And we speak till today, every time I see him. And imagine going down this path of going to prison, Akhi. I remember I was in jail and I remember seeing one brother, a big man. He became a Muslim, but his parents was who? A non-believer, was not Muslim. And he got the message where we came to prison. This was when I was in high down, HMP high down. When I went to, sorry, when I was in that prison, he got a, a knock on his cell saying that you need to come to us to the reception. He went to his reception, guess who he found? He found his family members there. They've come to see him. But hold on, it's not a visit though. So why are his family members coming? His family members came to tell him that, bro, your mother has just passed away. His mother died as a non-Muslim. The brother broke down, stayed behind his cell door, didn't come out for a shower or a phone call or even food, wallahi, for about two weeks. And he kept on crying to himself saying, Subhanallah, I never got the chance to tell my mother about Islam. I never got the chance to tell my mother that how good of a Muslim I have become. And I've forgotten about the old ways. I have neglected the old ways. But his mother died. And because he was a high risk offender, he couldn't even go to his mother's burial. Imagine that. Some people do, but you're just handcuffed and you go to the burial and you bury your, you bury your mother, your brother, and so on and so forth. And I said to the brother, bro, what's the first thing you're going to do when you get released? He said, the first thing I'm going to do is go, go to the grave of my mother before going to probation. I said to him, bro, you might get in trouble because I do not care. Because what is the point of me being released? What is the point of me being released when my backbone, my best friend has returned back to Allah? And she returned back to Allah in a way where she's not even Muslim, bro. She's not even Muslim. So I can't do Hajj on her behalf. I can't do Umrah umr on her behalf. I can't give charity on her behalf. So this is why the brother kept on breaking down. And this is the reality of you brothers and me For us neglecting our parents My mother came to see me once In my whole sentence When she came to see me She's wearing the whole hijab The whole abaya and so on and so forth Actually when she came to see me Wallahi I was holding back tears A woman that's wearing a hijab akhi, Is telling her to do this In order for her to get searched in order for her to tell, and then telling her to go to another room to take off her hijab so they could see whatever is under her hijab. Has she brought some drugs in, some mobile phone, a knife, whatever it may be. When I saw that, and in that moment I was on high risk, so I couldn't even have an open visit with her. So I had a closed visit with her, meaning it had to be behind a glass. And I couldn't even hug my mother, bro. I couldn't even smell her. And wallahi, I don't care what type of man you think you are or how strong you are. But if you don't have that connection with your mother, that like what I done, nearly every day, bro, nearly every day or every other day, I was crying to Allah thinking how much I've let my mother down in jail. And from that moment, I said, Mom, you would never come to see me again until I come out. And when I came out of jail, it was on a Friday. My mother and father came to this masjid to pray Jum'ah. I was at home waiting for them. This was 2014. That's when I came out of jail. And when I came out of jail, 14, I surprised them and I, told, and I made them an oath. I said, Mom, Dad, I would never go back to my sick and twisted ways. To my sins that I used to do. And I remember, bro, things were so bad, Ak, 
that when my enemies run up in my house, they try to brick my mum. But this is the reality of living the street life, Ak. But they robbed her. They took all of her gold. They took our money. They took many valuable things inside the house. Because we brought the beef to our doorstep, Ak. We brought the beef to our doorstep. And things were so bad, Ak. We were ashamed or scared to walk with our parents on the streets of who? The streets of Lucian. Because we didn't want our enemies to know what our mothers and fathers look like. And this is the reality. And wallahi, 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 it, it hurt me. The fact that I couldn't go even shopping or go grocery shopping on Lusham High Street to buy the fruits that you see in the stores with my mother. Because of the enemies that me and the circle around me have created. And every single, not every, but majority of our beef on road is because of what? It's because we helped the brother that was sitting next to in the masjid. Or the brother that was sitting next to in the school. They came to us to, for us to back their beef. And they left us to deal with their beef alone. My brother got stabbed up. I can't, I can't give count of the amount of times my brother got been stabbed up, bro. And who, who's the one that feels it the most? My parents. Us. And you know who else? Your local imam. Do you know why your local imam feels it as well? Because his job is to be the community leader. But he, at the same time, feels like he hasn't done enough to take the Muslim youth away from the streets. But he's doing everything in his power. Your parents are doing everything in their power. And this masjid, this mosque, will always be open for you, bro. But you know when I left things for the sake of Allah, I'll give you a prime example. There's a youth from here. He, is, he's in the, he was in the gang. But it still is in the gang, but anyways, yeah? He tried to shoot me on two occasions in Lucian Borough, in Catford. One in Downham, one in Catford. On two occasions, he tried to shoot me. Wallahi, we left it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I was so scared of telling my brothers and the people around me because I know how they're going to retaliate. They're going to go out and ride out and so on and so forth. And, you know, I left it to myself. Only me and another one of my, one of my best friends that's not Muslim, he comes to this masjid quite a lot. He's not Muslim, may Allah guide him, Amin. He, you know, we, we were the only two that knew of this. But I left it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and guess what happens to him, brothers, yeah? And sisters. He gets deported to Jamaica. Because he, bro, he was a menace, bro. He shot up quite a few men. He stabbed up quite a few men from our community. When he got deported to Jamaica, guess what happens? He started to having a shootout with who? With the government of Jamaica, the police. Marsha Manfo, he was a bad boy over there too. Wallahi, he got shot up. He got killed so badly. He got shot up so badly that when the feds in Jamaica pick, picked him up, yeah, they came with a pickup truck. They picked up his worthless body and dashed him in the back of a pickup truck. This was his end. You live by the gun, you die by the gun, bro. This is the end of someone that neglected the book of Allah. This is someone that neglected Islam because he, he wasn't Muslim. You hear me? But he oppressed people. He shot up people and stabbed up people. Look at his end. Another guy. I came out of prison, bro. I never looked after my teeth when I was in jail, bro. I'm not going to lie to you. There was times I'm in the block, no TV, no shower, no toothbrush and toothpaste. I was brushing my teeth like this. The guards didn't like me, so therefore they're just neglecting my hygiene. When I came out of jail, bro, I'm on my way to my dentist appointment in Catford. I jump on the train. Now, before the train, I jumped in the train station. Yeah? Coming from, uh, uh, what's it called? Because I went to Sainsbury's, the big Sainsbury's in Lower Sydney. Because we lived in Sydney, yeah? On, 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 on Upper Sydney. We lived in Upper Sydney. But we had beef with a couple guys from Sydney, so it makes no sense. So obviously, I lived in Upper Sydney. I came, took a bus to Lower Sydney, um, uh, Sainsbury's. From Sainsbury's, I jumped on the train. Jumping on the train to get to Catford, because that's where my dentist appointment was. Before I jumped on the train, I bumped into one guy, Muslim. This is the same guy that I 
actually broke his jaw twice before Joe. But now I found that he became Muslim. So I bumped into him at the train station. Akhi, I gave him salam, salamu alaikum, wa alaikum as salam. Akhi, we're hugging it out. Yeah, obviously, Akhi, I had my PTSD. Akhi, I was a bit shook. I'm not going to lie to you. I think, bro, it's him and two other men. I think to myself, Akhi, right now I'm not carrying nothing because I never carried nothing, Akhi. I left my, you know, my protections with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Akhi, my man comes to me, we're hugging it out. Akhi, he's like to me, what's your situation with the rose? And I say, Akhi, bro, I'm just trying to obey Allah to my best of my abilities. Cool. As my train pulls up, we're hugging it out, Akhi. We asked each other for forgiveness because he rushed me quite a few times, a couple of the man them. I broke his jaw on two occasions, so on and so forth, yeah? So we asked each other for forgiveness. As soon as he left the train station, as my train pulls up, Akhi, for a little gap, I see him pulling out a knife and giving it to one of his youngest. His one of his youngest came into the train station. As I'm helping a lady with her pram, with her buggy, onto the train, yeah, the guy went to stab me. But as I've gone to help her, I buckled into the train. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped me by buckling into the train. Because at the same time I buckled, he tried to stab me in my back, but he missed. I've turned around now, the woman is shouting, I'm there going back and forth with him, bro. As I'm trying to punch him, I'm not, I'm not punching him. He's got a big knife. I'm not trying to get stabbed. I'm just trying to get to my dentist appointment, bro. My dusty self has got a hole here, a hole here, and a hole there. I need quite a few feeling. My man's trying to stab me now. On that occasion, I kicked him in the chest with my left leg. As soon as I kicked him, he fell back and stabbed me in my leg here, where my knee is, yeah? My kneecap was the one that actually stopped it. He's running away, screaming out, yes. I must have been his first victim. Mark. Might have taken his knife virginity away from him while he's out as well. Did the whole shaban. My man running away. Akhi, I was more angry at the fact that I didn't get to my dentist appointment, the fact that now I can come to Lucian Hospital. Yeah? And uh, on the side of my knee, I ended up getting a little bit of glue. And subhanAllah... Man them came to the hospital with me, said, what happened? I told them, wagwan, and so on and so forth. Next thing you know, bro, I went back home, and guess who saw me, man? My mum. My jeans are ripped. I got blood running down my leg. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, I had dry blood on my jeans and so on and so forth. But my mum is telling me, Amen, what happened? She starts to panic because now her PTSD is kicking in because she's been to the hospital on numerous of occasions because her other son has been stabbed. This is my first stabbing, by the way. First time I got stabbed. I left it. The same guy that I left for the sake of Allah was in the country, in the bando. Yeah? And look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala humiliated him. Him and his friends are selling drugs. In the process of selling drugs, yeah? A crackhead came into the house. And a, a, an addict, a crackhead, yeah? Came into the house, had a fight with them, and stabbed up his boy to death. And he claimed to be a bad boy, bro, because you stabbed your Muslim brother if your shahada was sincere. I don't know, bro. I take it as my Muslim brother. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to guide him and me. Allahumma ameen. And allow us to be on the straight path. Ameen. He comes here now, Akhi, I'm hugging it out and kissing him, bro. That's my brother in Islam. You get me? That's it. So and brother's like, whoa, whoa, what do, you, what do you mean by kiss, bro? Relax, act. Oh, she's not, come on, bro. Act your age. I'm not talking about fruity colors. Come on, act. Anyways, bro. Man's going to hug it out and kiss him, and I'm going to forgive him. But in that process of leaving his boy in the country, in the bando, he ended up burying his boy. And when his boy was getting buried, he was in jail for selling crack, bro. So he couldn't even visit his boy. But because you left him. But I left it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Left it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On another occasion here, Akhi, I had my first day at work. I came to this masjid. I prayed Salat al-Asr. As you lot do, and I know some of you all go to Chick Chicken down the road over there. I was on my way to Chick Chicken. Yeah? Before I got to Chick Chicken, I got to, do you know that shop, that pram shop that's over there? Uh, not Moolies, but what pram shop called Moolies, Ak? <laughs> I love you, Ak. 
no, next to Moolies, yeah, there's like a there's like a pram shop right there, just, just a few doors down. I went to go and speak to some brothers there. I gave them the pain that I had with me and so on and so forth. The brother goes, bro, like, mashallah, man, you come a long way. You did say that you're going to change and so on and so forth. My first day at work, Ak. My first day at work. But remember the oath that I made with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as I'm walking towards a chicken shop, Ak, I see one black you from a distance, yeah? By the way, yeah? All of my enemies are black. <laughs> relax, man. Relax, relax. Hey, brothers, 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 hold on, bro. Hold on, brothers, yeah? Anyways, yeah, I got bad eyesight, innit? All my enemies are black, but all of my friends are also black. So for me, having bad eyesight, if I see a black guy from a distance, I'll be like, okay, like, am I going to be greeting him or is it going to be on site? Because this was the situation of living here, bro. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie to you. This is what, 2014, August. So I see my, my but, but, but this guy... Saw me walking out of the masjid from here on the bus. He saw me and he sees me walking towards Chick Chicken. So he came off the bus stop in Chick Chicken. Came off. Now he's stunting, coming in and out of Chick Chicken to see how far I am because he sees that I'm walking in that direction. But from a distance, I see this guy moving dodgy. And I'm with a brother from this community. I said to the brother that's with me, I said to him, Bro, walk in front of me. Act, act like you don't know me because this guy is a pagan. I'm going to deal with him. And if he's a brother, then obviously we, we, we greet him. As the brother got closer to him, the brother spuds him. As the brother spuds him now, I got comfortable thinking, if this brother knows him, I might know him. I got closer to him, bro. And, um, and this guy I went to school with, a good guy, bro. But little did I know he became part of a gang that had issues with me and my circle. Yeah, we were never gangs, by the way. And this guy, we went to the same school. He was a good you. But now we're talking to him how we're talking now on a humble tip, bro. Calm, collective, nothing, no, nothing wrong. Actually, the moment I turn around, as soon as I spudded him to go into Chick Chicken, he stabs me right here. Right here. On the side of my bum cheek, yeah? <laughs> wow, so, some immature brothers out here, bro. What's going on? It's not even funny, you know? Uh, this is a mad stab. He stabbed me with a ramble. So as he stabbed me with a ramble, he stabs me here, and the knife came out here. So that's how far the knife traveled, as he stabbed me. So I've turned, but on CCTV, I didn't know this yet. When he stabbed me, he tried to stab me on another two more times. So the first stab, he got me. The second and third stab completely missed me. But on C, what do you mean, how you missing, bro? <laughs> My man's like to me, how you missing? Qadr of Allah, but I'm here. What, you want to say R.I.P. Ayman? What's wrong with you, eh? A'udhu billah. But I said, how are you missing? Bruh. What go? I walk over with this generation, eh? Man, said, how can you be this close and you're missing my man? Come on, eh? But obviously on the second and third occasion, but on CCTV, on CCTV, the officers said, bro, the second and third stab, he, he got you. But subhanAllah, there was no scratch on me apart from the first stab. But on CCTV, it shows that it, it got me. It don't make sense. Anyways, yeah? Maybe it's from the angle of the CCTV. I don't know, innit? So I ran. He ran away, screaming out yes again. MashaAllah, brownie points for him. I ran into the chicken shop, bro. And I called out the boss man. I said, yo, boss man, call the ambulance. I've been stabbed. And I collapsed straight away on the door. And as I'm collapsing, and I'm there saying, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, constantly, constantly saying it, yeah? There was a Yadi woman in the shop. Akhi, this Yadi woman was annoying me, akhi. I'm dying over here, yeah? This woman, La God, Papa Jesus. And... Bro, just call an ambulance, bro. A man is suffering. And in that process, I remember seeing boss man from Chick Chicken big him up. He jumped over the counter with no hands. I don't know how you do that, because you know Chick Chicken. <laughs> it's quite high, isn't it? It's something out of a Bollywood movie. I don't know what he done. <laughs> <laughs> so my man, wallahi, he jumped over the counter without no hands. He put my head 
on his lap and was stroking me like a dog. He said, it's okay, Yachi. He said, it's okay. It's okay, it's okay. And the process of him doing that, subhanAllah. I remember blacking out because I was losing so much blood. Blacking out, blacking out, waking up, blacking out, waking up, black. And something that hurt me the most, Akhi, yeah, is that in the process of me dying on chick chicken, yeah, Wallahi, I saw bare man with their phones out like this, recording it, instead of coming to my aid. And some of them were even Muslims, bro. And that's what hurts me the most. Like, why has it come to this, bro? Where we, we, the moment something happens, every single person brings out their phones to try and record so they can post it on social media for the clout. Wallahi, this is the case. I see it. Back in my day, we see used to say a crackhead. Akhi, we're taking out our BBM, Blackberry or, or Sonia Ericsson, bro. Some of you don't even know what that is. Recording it. Making a mockery out of these addicts. But all of these addicts that we, tell, that, that we make a mockery out of, bro, they all have a story, Akhi, and some of them are sad. Because when you don't have Islam, you neglect everything, so you turn to the alcohol and the drugs to try and fulfill yourself. May Allah guide them, I mean. So as I'm doing this, the brothers are running, coming to the masjid. I went to the hospital, bro. Not, not Lucian, Dusty Lucian Hospital, bro. I went to King's College. As I got to King's College, I even know the Lucian Hospital was an eye distance away from me, because it was so severe, they took me to King's College Hospital. When I get to King's College Hospital, bro, I met one of the brothers, he got there before the ambulance. I don't know what type of driving you done, bro. But you got there first. Got there before the ambulance act. I remember seeing him coming down in the lift of the ambulance. I saw him, salamed him, then I blacked out. Went into the surgery, Achi, so many people. No, went into A&E, so many people came, Achi. There was about, Achi, more than 100 people apparently came, yeah? Everybody heard Amon got stabbed, they came. Out of those 100 people, bro, Let's just say 100, let's round it up, Akhi. Only about 5 to 10 of them I'm still friends with. You see, everybody likes to come and see your downfall, bro. But not everybody's your friend. Everybody wants to jump on this bandwagon of RIP if you die. And so on and so forth. But out of those people, wallahi, maybe maximum 10 of them I'm still in contact with now. It just goes to show, bro. This dunya was designed to break your relationship with your friends, your family, your loved ones. Because everything in this dunya is designed to break your heart. Other than the worship and obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever comes with Allah. And this is the truth. Akhi, they got told, line up into twos, you're going to say your hellos and your you know, greetings to Amen. They were going to take him to surgery. In the process of doing that, Akh, my heart stopped, bro. Imagine everybody's looking around them now thinking, bruv, what's going on? Like, you just told us Eamon's going to be okay, but yet now you're taking him into the theatre room, to the surgery room, because his heart has stopped. Actually, they used the defibrillator on me. I never came back. They did the CPR and so on and so forth. Actually, I never came back. The doctor said to me, Akhi, we put this sheet over your head and pronounced you dead. And we're now discussing amongst our brothers, I mean, sorry, our, our colleagues, as who's going to go and inform your brothers, your sisters, your loved ones and your friends that Eamon passed away, your heartbeat came back. And this is the na'mah and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then when I came back, I woke up on a Friday because I got stabbed on Wednesday. That whole time I was on life support machine. The first person I saw when I woke up was Imam Shaquille, my mother and my father. Because I woke up on a Friday. And wallahi, some people said to me, Akhi, or asked me, Akhi, how did you feel in that moment when you were unconscious or when you was on life support? Or did you see anything? Well, these men are watching too much movies, bro. <laughs> yeah, man, he must have saw something. I don't know what I saw. But let me tell you how I felt. I felt peaceful, bro. Because I made the oath to Allah. I made the oath to my parents. That I'm not going to go back to this guy that I used to be. And I made a difference with myself and my community. Even though I got stabbed on my first day at work, things happened. 
Akhi, we've been there, bro. We've had the girls around us, Akhi. I remember the McDonald's that you see over there with JD and that, all of that car park. Akhi, we've had our beef there. The stabbings, the shootings that's happened there. People being stabbed up. Everything's happened. He, this is your local area, bro. Man can tell you about stories about the man them that are still right now. Wallahi, that come to the masjid. Akhi, they're still strapped up. Not because, not because they want to be Akh or they're a bad boy. But no, bro, they've, they've left that lifestyle behind, but it's still chasing them. So they got to carry with, you know, they have to carry a tool. And they don't want to carry a tool, bro. They got a family, they got a wife, they got kids. And until today, they have to be strapped up because they're scared. That man, they are still going to be chasing them and put a knife or a bully in them, Ak. You think I'm not scared? Wallahi, I am. But if a man was to pick his battles with me, bro, and comes to me and tries to beef me, Ak, I'm putting my head down, bro. I'm, a, I, I, I'm the toppest waste man, bro. I agree I'm a waste man. Oh, oh, amen, getting G-checked. Yes, bro, I'm getting G-checked. Alhamdulillah. I've got a daughter to go back to, bro. Let, let me be known as a waste man. I couldn't give a damn. You come in my personal space, bro, and my life feels threatened. I, in self-defense, I have to do what I have to do. But apart from that, I'm putting my head down. Nowadays, brothers want to be quick to draw for the knife or draw for something else in order to what? Be the first person to do a strike, Akhi. Muslims beef in each other, bro. Let me tell you about two cousins, Akhi. Two cousins from, from North London. They both dressed up, looking to ride out, bro, on each other. But they didn't know they were riding out on each other. Ballied up everything. Akhi, they went out, both ballied up. They bumped into each other from a distance. They ran towards each other and stabbed each other up. Both of them. They both go into hospital because they fled from the scene. One of them, listen to this, brothers, wallahi, listen to this, bro. One of them died. One of them died. So guess what? The guy that's still alive, that's on the bed, laying down, and just being aided to, sees the guy that he just stabbed up, but he's keeping his mouth closed. But the, he, he recognized him from the clothes he was wearing. But the balakava is off, bro. And he found out that the guy that he stabbed that ended up to be dead is his own cousin and he didn't even know. This is what the reality of a Muslim has come down to. One of them died, bro. One of the reasons why I started doing these talks because I'm not a speaker, bro. Years ago, a Somali auntie came to me in, from, from Camden. Yeah? She came to me and says to me, you've been stabbed. You've, been, you, you've seen the roads because some people have told me. I did my first talk in Kilburn, Mashhad, because of this auntie. She said to me, I've lost my son just a few days ago to knife crime. I said to auntie, I can't speak because I'm not a speaker. She goes, please just try and direct these youth away from the roads. Then I found, she goes, I haven't even grieved for my first child yet. I said, what? What do you mean you haven't grieved for your first child? She goes, I have lost. I, hey, brothers, wallahi, try and understand the pain of this woman that's going through, bro. She said, I have lost two of my sons to knife crime in the space of six months. Six months, bro. This is our mother, bro. This is our mother where Muslims are killing each other, Ak. Since when has the Muslim become an enemy of another? Since when is it okay to ban out on your Muslim brother because he's from the other side? Since when? Put your differences aside, Ak. Akhi man's been here, bro. From young, where Imam Shakil has squashed a serious beef between two brothers. Serious beef, bro. Brothers are killing each other. And Mama Shaki was standing here saying, bro, I'm not carrying on until these two come in the front and forgive each other for the sake of Allah. And they're both in the masjid. And if you've got a problem with the brother that's sitting next to you, I can put your differences aside, Ak. You're Muslims. You would die upon la ilaha illallah. There's people that wake up, Ak, they die as a disbeliever, bro. But they wake up as a Muslim. 
And there are those that wake up as a disbeliever, but they die as a Muslim, without your control. Actually, I was given a talk. During my talk, I got the phone call that my mother passed away. My mother passed away the first time going to Mecca. 56 years old. And you know what gets back to me in my head? I remember the days I used to walk down the street, wallahi, walk down into the kitchen, sneaking up to my mother while she's washing up. Akhi, while she's washing up. My mother's had, boy, you can think of every trial and tribulations that's been set and been thrown at my mother. My mother's just been patient. Sabrun Jamil. And one ayah, me and my mother used to say a lot. It's from Surah to Yusuf, which is my favorite surah. And the ayah is, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qala innama ashku bathi wa huzni in Allah. Il Allah. I only complain of my grief and my suffering to Allah. Me and my mother used to say this a lot. And now this ayah means so much to me after her death. But I remember this one time, Akhi. I told you, sneaking downstairs, seeing my mother in the kitchen. And there's one thing that she's repeating upon her tongue. Oh my Lord. But she's saying it in Kurdish. She said, my Lord. I'm ready to meet you. My Lord, I don't know how much more pain I could suffer. Do you know why? Because, because it took scumbags like me to put her through pain. It took scumbags like me that made the house, the door, the front door getting kicked down. Her comfort, her comfort, bro. Her comfort was now nowhere there. My pagans came in the house. The feds came in the house searching for drugs or searching for weapons and this and that. But we were never drug dealers, bro. But they were just weren't coming in. While they are asleep, not even wearing their hijab, Akhi. Feds are running up in the yard. Is this fair for us? And even are coming out of the hospital after spending three to four months in there. I got shipped out to Kent. Far Kent, Akhi. Like, chilling them. Because I wasn't allowed to be housed in London no more due to my gun issues and so on and so forth, yeah? And I remember when I got there, yeah, Akhi, I got kidnapped. And the kidnapping was so severe, Akhi, they had me on video naked, torturing me. And, um, yeah, they did a lot of damage, innit? And then when they released me, there was a white woman that saw me naked on the street, put her uh, uh, jacket on top of me, covering me, called the ambulance. I went into Medway Hospital in Gillingham. I went through a surgery where they removed two thirds of my bowel. And in the process of it, Akhi, they told me that I could never have kids. As a man, Akhi, I cried, bro. I cried a lot, telling the hospital, telling the doctor, how dare you tell me this? But in that process, Akhi, look at, look, I was never, ever, ever open to marrying a woman. And I'm going to say this like this, bro. A lot of you are not as well, bro. I'm from the roads. You're from the roads. We see the way society is going right now. But as we know where it is. I never, ever looked at marrying a woman that was six years older than me. That's a divorcee and that has a child. And on top of that, she's a black sister. So I killed every barrier you could think of. Coming from an Iraqi background, of course, we want to marry the same culture in order for the language barrier not to be there and so on and so forth. But my eyes was open now to marrying a woman that had a child, which there was, it was always closed. But my eyes are open now, so I got married to her. And wallahi, brothers, I'm going to tell you this now, yeah? I spoken to my teacher, Ustad Yusuf, and I told him, bro, there's something that I'm suffering with a lot. After three years of trying, Bakhi, he advised me, he said to me, bro, give in charity. Give in charity. So for the brothers that are here today and the sisters that are here today, no matter what you're struggling with, if it's your, if it's, if it's your grades, your job, if it's thinking of getting graduated, or whatever it may be, Bakhi, your uni work, your school work, Bakhi, give in charity. For indeed, charity, Bakhi, 
will open up doors for you. Wallahi. I gave away in charity every single penny I had in my dusty Santander bank. And then in that process, Akhi, a month later after that, after three years of trying for a child, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed me with a daughter that my wife was pregnant. Nine months later, my wife gave birth to a beautiful daughter. And there was no one that gave me peace as a person more than my mother and my daughter. One of my peace has returned back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I've got my other peace left. So for the brothers that are in haram relationships, that are doing vaping or smoking drug or, or smoking drugs or even selling drugs. And, and this is for the sisters as well, man. Try and maintain your relationship with Allah and try and maintain your relationship with who? With your parents, man. And at the same time, the first thing you're going to be asked for in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your what? Your prayer. And shaitan, shaitan, the devil, refused, not forgot, refused to pray. Uh, not pray, to make sajda to Adam alayhi salam. And Allah gave him jahannam for eternity. So ask yourself, brothers, yeah? How many salahs and ruk'ah do you reject, that you neglect, that you delay on a real, bro? Because if this is your priority, akhi, everything in your life will fall into place. But if you neglect your prayer and you delay it, wallahi, you will forever live in misery. I was once upon a time there, and I'm telling you now, we will forever live in misery. And alhamdulillah, even till today, I'm still being tested. I live with a bag on my stomach and I got nerve damage on the left side of my body, which constantly means I'm in pain. Constantly in pain. This is why I like to physically do stuff. If it's physical workouts, if it's physically working, like a construction worker, in order to take my mind off things. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests those that he loves. So I'm going to say this to you brothers, yeah? When you leave here today, other than the food and everything that we're doing, yeah? Go to the shop, man. Get something for your parents that if you still have your parents around. Get something for your parents, Akhi, and guess what? Does everybody have a phone here, yeah? Yeah? I want every single one of you right now, right now, to message your parents. Right now, take out your phones, bro. No, no, be, your man said my phone's dead. A'udhu Billah. There's no charger with me. Is that right? May Allah bless you. Yeah? So message your parents and say to them, Mom, Dad, I'm just letting you know that I'm thinking of you right now and I appreciate everything you've done for me. Show gratitude to your parents, man. Wallah, I didn't show gratitude because you don't know. May Allah bless you, Akhi. Allah. Message your parents, bro. May Allah bless you, Akhi. MashaAllah, brothers, yes. So, Akhi? Send them a voice note, Ak. Master, what if your parents don't speak English? Send them a voice note, Ak. Man, will be sending voice notes to girls, but no, A'udhu Billah. That's a good question. You know what? One of the brothers, yeah? One of the brothers just asked me, yeah, do I still feel depressed now? Akhi, best believe, yeah? There isn't a day that goes past where I don't cry. But I've learned not to cry in front of people. I've learned to only cry by myself and leave it to myself on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because with all due respect, bro, no matter how much you love the people around you, that when you show them your vulnerable state, they will use that against you. We're, we're, we're humans, bro. Apart from the sincere ones. And I'm going to tell you this as well, my brothers, yeah? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he keeps us steadfast on this religion, man. Because there's people that are being misguided on a daily basis and there's people that are being guided on a daily basis. But guess what? If there was a nation that sinned, uh, sorry, if there was a nation that didn't sin 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would destroy this nation and replace it with a nation that sinned and repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the best of you are those that sinned and repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So repent sincerely. <laughs>